Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. I'm uh, I'm going to talk today uh, a little bit about environment art in Unreal Engine 4 and uh, I'll show you actually two scenes. Uh, one scene is uh, the one with the blocks, like the Lego blocks that uh, I created a while ago and the one that I also used for uh, showcasing uh, the beginning of this stream and uh, the other scene that uh, I also want to talk is uh, the one with the corridor it's a little bit more realistic scene uh, at the moment it's uh, both of them are with baked lights but I will talk uh, a little bit about uh, dynamic lights as well and uh, I have here a small list of uh, topics and things that I actually wanted to cover and uh, wanted to talk about and uh, mostly I picked those two uh, scenes because in one of the scenes I am uh, like they're both in Unreal they both are made in different pieces and after that uh, uh, everything is being assembled in, in Unreal, but they both have a very different approach to creating them. And uh, this is why I picked those two. Hey, welcome, welcome to the stream. And uh, yeah, we are uh, going to see for both of them like uh, what uh, was uh, what was my approach and uh, also uh, how, how I got to, to the place uh, as they work. And I uh, also wanted to uh, talk a little bit today, a topic that I still didn't make a video, but uh, soon I will make a video in, uh, on it and uh, I'll talk a little bit more because it's uh, it's a big part, especially for game art, uh, when it comes for uh, optimizing and when it comes for making uh, the scene actually work on different devices. So it's, uh, it's something that it's uh, important to also have in mind once you are starting already to create actual content that people are going to use or you are going to use into uh, a game. So let's first uh, start by just going quickly around the scene. I want to show you uh, what I assembled here. And then yeah, here you can see on the side I still have a few pieces left uh, which I used to build everything. And uh, the way that I approached this one was uh, I initially wanted to just create a small Lego kit over here and from it to start experimenting and uh, build the environment uh, in Unreal. And also the other thing that uh, you will notice is that everything is uh, just one uh, mid-gray material. And this is so because uh, of how I plant uh, the whole environment. So the, the whole planning stage is actually very important uh, part of, uh, of the process. So when you are starting uh, to make an environment or like when you're thinking of making an environment, it's always a good uh, to just put even few like some drawing sketches, just few ideas on a piece of paper uh, because it will first help you a little bit polish your idea and as well it will uh, get a better result in the end uh, at least from my experience I've seen that usually it's uh, the result it's much better so initially I, I, I knew like the plan that I put for this scene was uh, I want to create a modular kit I want to create it with just one master material and after that uh, have the possibility to change different values and this is exactly how uh, I did it so these are almost all the pieces I think here are just few pieces uh, that are missing and once uh, I got everything imported the first part was to actually set up my master material. So here uh, I already made a video about uh, materials in Unreal. So if you didn't see that one, you can go and check it out. But uh, it's a very basic setup where I'm just uh, taking one diffuse texture because uh, as I'll show you in a little bit, I actually have um, some textures that uh, I baked because uh, I wanted for uh, the reflections not to be completely flat on the surface. 
I will uh, just go here and show you really quickly from close. So you can see that uh, it's not completely flat. There is a little bit of a noise in the into the reflection, and I also have a second uh, texture for for the reflections that uh, gives a little bit more variety. It's a little bit with scratches. So uh, first one is uh, the diffuse, and then I have the diffuse cover, which uh, those two I'm multiplying. And as well, this is like a standard setup uh, that uh, I'm uh, usually doing. Hello to everybody that is just joining us. Uh, I'm multiplying it one more time with the ambient occlusion from here. Uh, the reason why I'm not putting the ambient occlusion over here is because over here it's actually you won't really see any result. And the way that uh, I use uh, usually the ambient occlusion, that uh, the, the, at least the baked one, uh, is uh, I'm just getting it from from here from the red channel and after that multiplying it uh, with my diffuse of course this is something that if you want you could put one more multiply over here and uh, one uh, parameter node and this way you will be able to control it so this way it will be uh, also something that you can tweak but in this case i really didn't want to tweak it because i knew that uh, anyway i'm not gonna have lots of information into my uh, occlusion so uh, next one normal map it's uh, pretty straightforward i didn't do anything special and after that uh, occlusion roughness and metallic uh, map with uh, two nodes that uh, I'm able after that to control it into the material instances. And uh, as I said, I have uh, two different uh, roughness maps that I created. So this is, I'll show you the, uh, this is how the first one looks like. And this is the second one. You can see that it has a little bit more noise. And as well, it has uh, those uh, like micro scratches here and there. They uh, really help, especially if you are having, uh, and this one you can see that it doesn't have those scratches. So uh, this, these small details for the roughness really help to make your environment uh, a little bit more interesting. Because uh, as you can see, it's... Uh, it, uh, if I didn't have those textures, it was going to be just some flat colors and uh, you won't really have uh, any like variety uh, in terms of like color, in terms of like how uh, everything behaves, especially when you are walking around and uh, you can see that here and there it will be like a little bit more glossy or not as glossy. So this uh, kind of details, like small details, it's, uh, it's it's very important, especially when you're doing like some stylized or some uh, very flat uh, pieces of environment like this one. Yeah, you can see it, for example, here, the, the micro detail from the normal map and also the whole reflection from, uh, from our roughness. So once uh, everything was, I was happy with uh, this material, I just started making a couple of colors. I usually use, um, like, I usually take the color scheme uh, myself, like I just make some uh, colors that I really like, for example, in Photoshop and uh, see how they work together. But uh, also there is a one web page. I will just quickly find it and we'll uh, drop it on the first monitor where this is the web page. It's called uh, Color Scheme Designer. So uh, for this one, uh, it's something that, for example, if you are struggling with uh, what colors exactly to pick, so you can just come to the web page and after that it's, uh, it can create very fast and very easily a color scheme for, for you. So uh, here it's, I'll just very quickly go through it and you can after that play with it. So you have a couple of different uh, things like you have the mono one, which will pick just uh, different things. You have the, the trio, then you have uh, opposite colors and so on and so on. So you can uh, come, I will put a link into uh, the chat if uh, somebody wants to uh, check it out and uh, if you want to use it and also you can uh, use it for uh, like it it 
just creates this nice palette that uh, you can very easily use either for your designs or for uh, other things. So yeah, go check it out, especially if you're stuck with uh, the colors for uh, your environment. So for this one, I didn't uh, use the color palette from there, but uh, instead I just uh, create my own. You can also, the other way of doing color palette is going to be if you really like some, some image and you want to have like the same type of colors, you can create a color palette uh, on your own. And uh, it's uh, very simple, so it's just uh, opening the image inside Photoshop and picking a couple of samples here and there, and after that uh, everything will work together, just put them on the side and you will have all the color codes and, and everything. And in my case, uh, I went a little bit more experimental. So I just uh, know that I knew kind of the red and the green that I wanted. And from there on, I built the rest to match those, uh, those two. And uh, let me open one of the material instances. I will uh, actually grab one piece like this one let's take this one I'll clone it and I'll put it over here so that it's a little bit on uh, the light and shadow as well and I will uh, just duplicate this blue and I'll name it blue too so here uh, I promoted, as you can see, the diffuse, normal and uh, roughness. I'm just going to change it to the other roughness so that we have the one with uh, a little bit of scratches. And then we have uh, the roughness power and the metallic. So here, if we want to make it uh, metallic, it's very easy. We just put it on one or on zero if it, we want it to, to be plastic. And then, of course, uh, we can play with the roughness. So. Uh, let me drag and drop it here and I will just make it like this. Uh, so this, uh, this type of workflow, it's uh, very, let me show you how exactly it stacks. It's uh, very common for, for working in Unreal and uh, also it's something that uh, I strongly recommend it uh, for you to have like master materials and then uh, from those master materials instances because uh, it makes it very simple and very easy to uh, change and also to create like new variations of, of your materials. And uh, this, especially if you are in a production, it's a very important part and it's something that uh, you definitely want to save uh, as much time as possible. So uh, I'll remove it. Oops. Any questions so far? I immediately, from the start of the stream, immediately jumped into talking and explaining. So if anybody has uh, any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, ask me. We are going to do a very short uh, Q&A session at the end, but also during uh, the whole stream and uh, while I'm talking. If you are interested in something, uh, just feel free to ask me right away and I will uh, tell you. So I think that Unreal is okay. Everything's fine. Thought that it will crash. Okay, so once uh, we had uh, all the uh, meshes and also all the materials set up, uh, what I did is actually I built, I, this is why I saved uh, this building over here. So uh, this one, if I uh, select it, you can see that those are actually groups, so I can ungroup them. And you will see that it's made from uh, all these individual pieces, which is very nice because for me it's very easy if uh, I want to just change something and uh, to make like new designs and just I can whenever already you have like some part be build it you can just build on top of it and uh, it will be uh, like very very quickly to <laughs> what did your father teach you about environment art <laughs> I will tell you a little bit later in the stream no worries <laughs> And uh, yeah, once uh, everything is done, like it's very flexible, but 
the thing is that uh, it's not optimized because uh, what it does uh, essentially every single piece of uh, these blocks is actually a draw call on its own. And what is draw calls? Draw calls is uh, everything that is being rendered pretty much, like if I could put it in a very simple way. Uh, so if you have like 10, 10 blocks uh, and each of them is having like a single material, so you have uh, like those uh, as draw calls. And then for example, if they have like more materials assigned, like they're split in few parts and they have more materials assigned. So those will be additional draw calls. And uh, basically everything which is being assigned, like everything which is being rendered on the scene, it's it's a draw call and uh, when we have uh, our meshes split it into many small pieces it creates more draw calls which generally for pc for example it doesn't really make uh, a lot of impact in your performance for console not really like it's a uh, very very small like you need to be very not careful to actually have an impact but, uh, for example, if you're doing like uh, for uh, Switch or you're doing for mobile or some other uh, platform where it's uh, more limited in terms of uh, power, then you are going to uh, face uh, a lot of optimization issues because of, uh, of this. So, uh, the way of optimizing this is uh, once you already have your uh, piece of environment like piece of uh, your asset build it up from your um, elements you can just uh, have everything selected right click and after that merge actors and what this will create is a new merged actor I will show you for example the same roof that we have here yeah we actually have it all over here so this roof is exactly the same as this one but instead of being uh, separated into many different small pieces it's actually just one big piece and uh, this means that uh, at the moment we drop down the draw calls from i don't know maybe 40 or 50 different elements to just the one for, for the mesh and this, of course we have two materials over here so we have uh, for those as well but uh, it dropped a lot in terms of uh, draw calls and uh, of course it saved us a lot more memory for uh, adding other things into, into our scene uh, and this is something that uh, if you open some of the example projects uh, that are made from uh, Epic Games in, uh, in Unreal 4, you can actually see, for, for example, the mobile one, they have a very similar approach. They uh, import because for uh, level artists, it's very easy to work with uh, simpler pieces like modular ones or like rocks and other things. And uh, after that, uh, once uh, everything is set as a design, they just merge everything so that uh, it's, uh, it's being optimized. Uh, back in the days, uh, we were actually doing this just uh, by hand. So once you are already happy with the design, you would merge uh, some of the meshes. And, and today is still actually done. There are uh, still like some custom engines and uh, majority of custom uh, engines, I think actually don't have this option to merge the actors, but instead you need to do it outside uh, the editor and uh, later on just merge everything. So, uh, When you already have uh, some groups created, for me, it was very pretty quick to create, uh, to build the rest of the city because uh, this one here and this one, like all the buildings, they are from just three elements. I have the one which is for uh, the bottom part. Then we have the ones which are floors and I can stack uh, as many as I want. And then I have the one on the top. And after that, of course, uh, all these small decorations around the building is something that uh, we can put uh, wherever we want or we would like to have them. Uh, and this is the only other house which is uh, completely custom built uh, rather than uh, just copy pasted from, from those. And the trees, I just made uh, one variation 
and after that you will see that some of them are a little bit higher than others like for example this one here and this one uh, those it's just an extra element on the top to uh, make a little bit of a uh, difference between those trees so this is also a very valid approach if you are building environment especially if you're building big ones so you have your uh, small elements and small groups that uh, you can build something and then you can kind of create uh, some pre-made groups of already uh, those small elements and make like few variations and especially if you can make them in a way that you can after that stack them together and like create completely new design it's going to be uh, a lot uh, like you will just create scenes very very fast and this is uh, important part uh, when you're working into a production and you have like some deadline that uh, you need to meet so uh, any questions regarding this scene for all the people that are this evening with us? No questions. Everybody knows everything. That's that's good. So, uh, before before uh, me continuing to to go over uh, the scenes and actually opening the other scene and showing you there, uh, I just quickly wanted to make one announcement that uh, from starting from today it's uh, possible to uh, join as a member of uh, my channel and uh, the membership uh, there's like three different tiers uh, and uh, you can go and check them out uh, I'll, it will be i'll be very grateful if you uh, support me to create more uh, content for everyone and also in terms of uh, benefits and like in terms of uh, what you guys are going to get there i wanted to show you some of the things so uh, oh we have a we have a question there for what was my inspiration for the scene so the inspiration i think it was for many places i uh, i liked few different uh, like Lego ideas that I saw on internet and I also uh, I think I saw a few cities and buildings and uh, yeah, just make, made some mishmash between all, all of those and uh, for some of them I just experimented completely like for the trees for example and for uh, this build for the initial building I just completely experimented and uh, decided to just try out some shapes and uh, see how how it goes for the others uh, i already looked into some reference uh, online uh, so uh, let me just show you some of the things that uh, like you'll be able to uh, grab as a member so uh, the, the for the tier one of course you're going to have all the awesome uh, badges and custom emojis and as well you will be able to check all the members uh, posts that i'll be doing uh, another thing, like for the next year, uh, I'm setting up uh, a private Discord where you guys can send me your scenes and everything for feedback. And uh, for that one, uh, I can help you with like exact uh, issues or exact questions that you have, and also uh, help you like build up your portfolios, help you if you want to apply for two different uh, studios, uh, and like what you need to do and what steps you need to take. To prepare for uh, your interviews and so on and so on and uh, the last one is uh, probably the most interesting and I will just quickly open uh, here this folder that I prepared so this is just uh, one of the things that uh, I'll be actually uploading for uh, for this month uh, I prepared it so uh, for the last third tier uh, I'm going to also upload some of the scenes, like most of the scenes that we are creating here for, for the tutorial, so you'll be able to download all of those. But also, uh, I started experimenting with uh, scant materials and uh, creating some scant assets. 
So for that one, uh, I'll be uh, I'll probably be putting like between five to ten uh, different scanned materials and some assets and uh, everything like this. So all of those are going to be, of course, for uh, you as a member completely available to use them in your uh, scenes or like in your projects or uh, everywhere where you want. I'll actually be very happy to see some uh, some things build it up with uh, assets uh, that you can take from, from here. And speaking of uh, a scene that uh, I will uh, also be uh, also be available for, for downloading, uh, it's the second scene that we are going to talk today. It's this one, so this is also one of the scenes that uh, I'm at the moment uh, packing and uh, just making few uh, small changes just to be like in names and everything more clear and more understandable and like uh, uh, a lot of... Uh, to be very clear for you to go around the scene. So uh, this one is also something that it's going to be available in uh, the next uh, one or two days. So you'll be able to download it and uh, get like all the meshes and uh, textures and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, all the things that I built uh, here. Hey, hello. Yeah, no, no worries. You are not late at all. You can always uh, the the stream. If even if you came up a little bit late, don't worry. Uh, I'm uh, after that uploading it and uh, it will be available uh, on the channel so you can always come and uh, check some some stuff especially since I'm talking uh, a little bit about uh, setup materials and other things and if you have some questions I can uh, you can come back a little bit later and uh, check them so that you can use those this knowledge into your scenes so uh let's talk now about this one so this one it's it was a very very different approach from from the other scene so both of them uh as i said build it up in unreal build it for unreal but both of them are very different in approach because for the first one i wanted to create um a set of assets and after that with this set of assets build uh, my scene in unreal and like customizing and doing everything there while Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, after that, uh, it's very appreciated for the support. Woo and uh, this one, actually, um, the way that uh, I build it is uh, creating the scene itself. And uh, I uh, made everything in, in 3ds Max. I already knew what uh, I wanted to uh, to have as an end result. So I didn't really want to have uh, the possibility of uh, customizing it or the to experiment inside. So uh, in this case, I just had uh, a one reference actually that uh, I saw online for uh, like few. I checked a couple of corridors but there was one that particularly I, I really liked and uh, after that I just uh, decided that I want to make something similar so uh, here first thing that is a uh, very big thing to notice is actually where the pivot point of my objects is compared to the other scene which is with the blocks because if you see that uh, whichever asset I select, uh, except the boxes, I think those are the only ones that are with the center pivot. But uh, the rest, you will see that uh, the pivot point is going to be exactly on the same place. Like this is the my zero 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 of the scene, uh, and this is oh thanks <laughs> thanks a lot, thank you for your uh, donations. I'll be. You're very generous this evening. Save your donations. <laughs> Join the membership. So, um, yeah. So, uh, the way that... Uh, the reason why I actually uh, did this, like the reason why I actually did it in this way, is because, uh, exactly, I didn't want this to be uh, in different pieces, I didn't want it to be customizable, I knew that I'm not going to build it here, so instead I just uh, imported everything, 
uh, made again the same uh, kind of the same type of master material you will see that uh, this master material is uh, a lot less uh, complicated than the other one like um, for example I didn't want to change the metalness because already I uh, when I made the textures and baked everything in uh, substance I actually uh, made like the values for the roughness and for metallic the way that I wanted sorry and uh, this one this is why it's uh, a lot uh, it's more simple I just wanted to play to be able to play a little bit with uh, the roughness and uh, that's why this is like the only value that I actually promoted here after that, I actually have, um, <laughs> let me see, I have another one which is for the glow. So here there are few master materials, like the one which is for all the um, meshes that don't ha doesn't have any transparency or uh, opacity. So it's this one and then uh, the other one, which is this one here which uh, is actually for my emissive so for for the emissive one of course i have like just a color node then i have one parameter so that i'm able to change the value of how uh, bright is our emissive and then multiplying it and going to the emissive color and i think i should have one more if i'm not mistaken i should have one which is for the oh yeah this is one this one this is a uh, master material for uh, the decals and uh, I will show you there's uh, there's uh, one decal over here it's uh, this puddle of, uh, of water yeah especially I don't know how the temperature is uh, where you live guys and girls but uh, pff, here it's uh, it's been so warm uh, the last couple of days and uh, oh. so uh, for the decal I um, decided to make uh, the whole floor and everything a little bit more flat so it still has like some variation into the roughness but I already knew that I wanted to have uh, like here and there some uh, wet parts and this is like one of those so this is the my decal I will uh, just come here to yeah and turn it off so you can see uh, the difference so this is how it looks without it and this is with the decal so I if you're doing something like this I really recommend you to like especially if you're doing some more realistic renders like not uh, as stylized for stylized it works as well but uh, I think for realistic renders, it uh, it has a, it brings a lot more value to the scene at the end. Uh, adding like some wet parts like this, or adding some uh, extra dirt or uh, other elements uh, in uh, with this method, it is really going to bring uh, a a better like a, another level of detail to your scenes, and like it's very simple. And uh, it doesn't require you uh, to create this a lot of time. I'll actually show you very quickly uh, how I did it. And uh, the effect that you get for, for it, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that in, in Spain it's, uh, it's uh, very, very warm. I hope that you are somewhere close to uh, seaside or have some uh, like swimming pool or something like this around you that you can go there because yeah this is pretty much everything that I want to do during the day uh, okay so here uh, you can see that I have uh, another one which uh, this one is uh, actually exactly in front of the camera where the camera for uh, the whole shot was set and yeah, it uh, brings a little bit more detail, so without it, I'll just quickly remove it. Without it, you can see that uh, we don't really see these lights from the top that are being reflected. Like, we see just a little bit some smudge, but uh, don't really see them. And once we have this, it actually brings, like, one of the lights, because 
I made it uh, that this side here is a little bit cut off so the rest uh, it doesn't really become like repeatable but instead it just brings like one detail and uh, if you move the camera you can see that it will be grabbing like one or maybe two but already the second one is going to be like very distorted and uh, you don't really uh, have this uh, like repeatability of uh, all these uh, elements because the scene itself anyway it's uh, very repeatable like just these concrete tiles and those lights on the bottom so I wanted uh, exactly this uh, decals and uh, small elements like this and like those boxes uh, or palettes to uh, actually break this whole uh, repetition and like break this uh, symmetry of, of uh, the scene and uh, Talking about like breaking the symmetry and breaking like the whole design, uh, it's actually very interesting because in the very beginning I made the corridor to be just uh, a straight corridor and at the end with uh, this T. Uh, and this is uh, something that uh, most of the time, like sometimes you just have like a very good idea uh, from the very beginning of uh, what you want to, to do and it just clicks and uh, it works very well. But uh, sometimes your designs for the scenes actually are going to come through number of iterations. So this was uh, the case for me for this scene. And uh, like the very first generation, if I may call it, uh, of the scene was actually just a straight corridor with a T at the end. Uh, and after that, I, I, was, uh, I started thinking like, okay, this is like quite boring. I need to add something. So uh, this was the first part that uh, I've added and it looked pretty nice the thing is that uh, it kind of disbalanced the the whole scene and i started experimenting a little bit like okay what can i put on the other side like uh, maybe to put some decals or to put some other stuff but still uh it didn't really um, feel for me right like it didn't feel the right balance and then uh i thought okay what if I make it that the whole corridor actually is uh, blue and has like this bluish light and then we have uh, this warm lights which is coming from uh, our left side but in contrast on the right side not only that uh, we have a little bit more open space but also to have uh, the whole scene being uh, much darker than uh, on the left side and this way First, this th part here, it's uh, as an element, you can see that it's like a lot bigger element into the composition and it's something that it draws the attention of um, the viewer over there. But on the other hand, uh, like this is like kind of like an instinct for us. We are a little bit more drawn to the light, like the dark side, you don't really feel that comfortable and you don't really want to go there. So uh, in terms of shapes, on the right, it's uh, a lot more grabbing your attention. Hello, thanks for joining. And on the left side, on the other, on the other hand, it's uh, smaller than in terms of shapes, but it's... Uh, with just having this brightness there, it's something that draws the eye of the viewer as well. And uh, keeping like your viewer interested and keeping them in the scene, it's something that is uh, very important and it's something that uh, actually makes your picture interesting. So um, there are like a lot of different ways and uh, a lot of different ways like for making the composition to uh, make it interesting and to keep the viewer inside. And uh, this scene is, uh, I can talk a little bit more about the composition because it's uh, actually, uh, it very, very uh, gets to the very basics of uh, creating like some composition because uh, it's just a straight corridor and you can see that uh, there's uh, just a few type of lines that uh, there are. So I don't have like any organic shapes or anything like that. Hey, hello for all the people that are just joining. And uh, first, uh, once our camera, I'll just go through 
uh, the view of our camera. Yeah. So uh, first thing, like when you uh, look through the camera, you see this line on the very top. Uh, the textures, I there are some of them combined. So uh, I used uh, Substance uh, Painter. So for example, the one which is the concrete one, uh, I used the base which was uh, in Substance, already existing one. And after that, I just, uh, I think I added on top a couple of layers, like for some scratches and some uh, different elements. Uh, the metal panels, it's something that I created uh, for the uh and uh like some of the other pieces are uh, something that i actually created for the quake 3 remastering uh and the floor the floor i don't really remember uh the water puddles and like decals and other stuff uh, i created them uh, in photoshop and uh we have a, another question. Uh, hello, my friend. Where are you from? Hello, hello to you as well. I am originally from Bulgaria, but I am now slowly being cooked in uh, France. And uh, yeah, it's super warm. <laughs> I hope that uh, it will be uh, like raining and it won't be that warm uh, in the next couple of days. So uh, let's go back to uh, the, in the composition. Initially, when you look into the scene, you can see that there is this pipe and uh, like with the other small pipes. And all this, uh, if you look it from uh, a perspective of a person that, for example, is drawing like classical drawing, all these are lines, like all these lines, they're guiding you towards uh, the end of, of the scene. And then uh, if I didn't put this pipe, you would have like a very vague line of uh, distributing the attention of the viewer towards the two sides. So this is why I actually put this pipe here because your eye is being guided all the way to the end of the scene. It doesn't matter where you look at in the very beginning, like you have the lines here, you have the lines on the side, you have the lines on the um, uh, floor. And everything is pretty much drawing you to the end of uh, the whole composition. And from here you can see that already I'm going sideways. So you can either be concentrated on this side or like your attention could be drawn on the other side. And uh, having this like circulation of uh, the people, like the interest and kind of like uh, guiding them through, through your scene, it's an important step. And uh, it's something that... Uh, uh, you actually, if you're making games, it's, uh, it's something that you will need to use and you will need to, uh, create and like how to use the lines in the best possible way to draw the attention of the viewer. I'll give you a very simple example. And for example, you can check also horizon, uh, so Horizon Zero, they uh, Horizon Down, sorry, they are doing uh, an amazing job actually for the composition. They uh, are playing all the time with lines, so they have their horizontal lines and they have their vertical lines, and uh, they are using those lines to guide the player and to uh, tell them which places are friendly and which are not possible to go or like not friendly. So they use all the horizontal ones to draw the attention and uh, like to guide them around the map. But then you have the vertical ones, which uh, are either like, for example, some spikes or something like this, which either like just co close the composition in some place, or they are just telling the player that uh, this place is not safe or this place is not meant to like you, you don't, you should not go there. And I want you to, like, if you look through some games, like you play some games recently, just check, like, what kind of lines they have. And uh, also check the meshes which are associated with this type of uh, lines. Because uh, usually the ones that are, for example, meshes that are blocking, they are going to have a little bit more chunky, like more uh, edges and uh, be more rough. So it doesn't look as friendly as, for example, more smooth lines. Uh, for the more organic shapes or like the place that you actually need to go. So we have another question for Quixel Mixer. 
Uh, no, I didn't use uh, Quixel Mixer. I'm uh, actually planning to use it for uh, another project, and uh, I've been playing with uh, with it. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty good tool. I've been playing with it a lot, but uh, still didn't use it in uh, any of the tutorials. But uh, I'm I'm planning to to create. This is uh, from Substance uh, Painter and uh, also Photoshop. The majority of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, recording will be available, uh, of course, and uh, like I think um, I'm not sure how much time it will take for uh, YouTube to uh, process everything so that it's available, but uh, I think in a few hours, so, so tomorrow or the day after, you can uh, just come back and uh, watch the stream and go through the things that uh, I'm talking. So, uh, yeah, we covered uh, pretty much uh, the difference between uh, the first scene that uh, I wanted to talk about and the second one. So, uh, again, both of them inside Unreal 4, both of them created uh, using 3ds Max, and uh, but both of them have very different initial approach and very different design approach and uh, also were created uh, so that they can be used in a different way inside Unreal. We have uh, one more question. We will show us how to build a scene from scratch. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, this is, of course, a very uh, big topic, but it's something which uh, at the moment I'm uh, recording. And uh, I uh, wanted it to... N because in a stream, I, I don't think that it's uh, very uh, interesting uh, in terms of... Uh, <coughs> sorry, in terms of uh, streaming it, uh, because... It usually takes uh, time, and uh, it's. Uh, I I think that you will be bored to death by by <laughs> seeing me uh, thinking over my my designs because uh, it involves uh, <laughs> me staying uh, and staring for half an hour in couple of reference images <laughs> and thinking. Uh, okay, this goes well with this. Maybe this should uh, be f okay with that. So I, uh, I'll definitely do uh, a video about building the scene from scratch and like going through the designs. But uh, I'll record it and uh, post it on the channel because I want it to be a little bit more uh, systematic and, some, and just to summarize it instead of uh, me just talking uh, random stuff uh, to, to be uh, giving you like synthesize all the information uh, needed for creating the scenes. And uh, this is actually a very good uh, time to tell you that uh, on Twitter I, I made uh, a post a few days back about um, what series uh, you guys want me to, to create. And uh, there was a lot of votes for uh, doing a series uh, about from a beginner to a professional environment uh, 3D artist. And uh, I already started recording it and this Friday it's uh, going to be the first, the very first episode of it. Uh, I think that the whole series is going to be around uh, 20 episodes. I will be posting like one or two episodes per, per week. Uh, and this is going to be in between uh, my regular videos that, uh, that I'm uh, doing. Uh, but the, in the series, I will cover uh, first uh, like uh, for modeling, modeling basis, uh, everything that you need to know in terms of optimization. And uh, there I will actually cover exactly for the designs and how uh, I'm building up my designs. And also I'll probably have a special video which is going to be uh, for explaining composition and when you're making a composition, uh, uh, how to make it like interesting for games and how to make it interesting for a cinematic because it's a little bit different topic and uh, there are some tricks that uh, work in some places and uh, another tricks that don't work as well. So uh, yeah, be be sure to check that one out and uh, it will be, yeah, it will be pretty, pretty long uh, series. I think that it will go for the next maybe two months uh, while I be, before I get to the very end of it. But in that series, I really want to cover everything uh, for modeling. Uh, I'll be doing uh, tutorials in Max, in ZBrush, uh, for Substance uh, Painter, I'll do as well. 
and of course uh, at the end we will be assembling everything inside Unreal. For uh, for the course, my idea is to create like a one small modular environment and then show you how to build uh, the rest of the scene. I actually already started uh, collecting references, so I think in a few days. Uh, once I clear a little bit the idea in my head, I will uh, make a post in the community, uh, I think on YouTube this time, so uh, that you can kind of pick which uh, which one of the designs uh, that I brainstormed and uh, collected some references uh, would like me to to do for, for this uh, series. So there is a... Uh, it would be nice to build a scene just using Quixel Megascans. Uh, yeah, definitely for uh, for Quixel Megascans, it's uh, more of a... I can easily make uh, a, a series which is uh, going to be like um, speed uh, scene design, I would say. So it's uh, something uh, which is a good idea. I, I can uh, definitely put something like that into planning and, uh, and create... Probably I'll make some small forest uh, natural environment. I'll think about it a little bit. If you have some uh, ideas of uh, what kind of environment with uh, the mega scans, you would uh, it will be interesting for you to to see. Uh, yeah, please leave a comment in either on uh, on the stream or on uh, some of the other videos. Okay, uh, now I think it's uh, time to leave uh, a little bit uh, on you. Like uh, ask me questions what would you um, what do you think about the scenes what do you think uh, about uh, like the tutorials that I'm making some suggestions and uh, overall if you have like any questions from uh, the things that I talked so far uh, about materials about sealed building and uh, scene building and also about uh, composition Yeah, uh, the Discord server is uh, in in progress. I will. Uh, uh, I think that probably by next week. Uh, I already made the server, and uh, but it's still not separated inside, and I need to uh, make a little bit of a structure and also uh, add few people which are gonna be helping me a little bit to moderate it and uh, maintain everything. And also, if I I'm not available uh, during the day, this means that I'm. Uh, probably at work, uh, I'll, uh, some of them might also reply to, to some of your questions as uh, those guys are uh, my colleagues and uh, they they also know all the ins and outs, outs of uh, game development. We have already a suggestion I see for a scene, castle on a mountain. Okay, that's <laughs> medieval castle probably on a mountain, yeah. Uh, we have another one. Hello, I'm relatively new to this field. I have recently made my first texture in Substance Designer. I was wondering if you had any tips on the limitations of Substance Designer texture in a game. Uh, so, Substance Designer is an amazing tool. I, uh, I would say that this is a very good choice of you to, to pick it up because, um, like, in in uh, I can talk a little bit uh, actually from this question for generally uh, game industry and uh, how people in uh, game industry are working with uh, like in in art. So uh, if you're looking into working like in big studios, uh, you will be very specialized. So you will be either creating like props or you will be uh, making like uh, levels, uh, level art. So this includes sometimes just the dressing of, of scenes. Sometimes it could be like the whole building of the level, but uh, not really creating all the, the props that are going to go in the level, but uh, just assembling in the engine. Uh, and if you are good in substance uh, designer, you can actually also take a role of uh, doing the texture work and the material, some of the material work. And... This is quite desirable. I would say that uh, there are not uh, usually many people on, on the project that are doing uh, this kind of stuff. And um, also uh, what I've seen from recent projects that I I've been working, uh, I can say that uh, this is like one of the bottlenecks usually on the, on the production. And uh, yeah, sometimes, especially for PC and console, like next-gen console games, it's... Uh, always uh, a lot of work and rework and testing from the texture side. So 
picking a uh, substance designer it's it's an amazing uh, choice and it's something that uh, definitely will be very beneficial for you even if you uh, decide to do more 3d and rather than uh, just texturing uh, game made with substance designer materials in theory uh, so you uh, you could technically make uh, a full like the full game for uh, just with substance designer materials it's uh, it's not impossible it's uh, not mandatory uh, the texture process for for um, studios it's usually uh, there is it depends a lot on the art style like sometimes people uh, go for hand painted texture sometimes people go for more realistic ones and when you go for realistic ones you either go for uh, some scan data or you are going also for uh, using something like for example substance designer or mixer where you can uh, create like some custom ones and uh, go from there. Uh, so yeah, definitely it's uh, it's uh, you have a lot of uh, different choices. I think this is a great format. I want to wish you good luck and thank you in advance. Thank you as well for uh, checking my streams and yeah, checking my channel overall. I'm I'm super happy that uh, there are many people that are interested in the topic and uh, I see many comments that uh, people uh, are leaving on the videos about new ideas and new videos and uh, also about um, different things that uh, they are struggling at the moment and they need some help and uh, I'm always happy to help and uh, especially get new people that are just starting in the industry excited and uh, see that all of us are just some cool people <laughs> that like uh, helping each other. I uh, don't mind which type of environment, but uh, I just want to see how you deal with uh, blending different materials. But uh, if you have to say something, a mix of hard surface building and organic terrain. Okay, yeah, that's uh, definitely... I, I think that the castle uh, on a mountain... Uh, idea sounds uh, pretty good. I'm not sure that there's uh, many castle-like uh, assets in uh, Megascan to build like a full environment. I need to go through their library and check what exactly they have. I haven't checked it for a while. Uh, but uh, I think that they had some ruins and some uh, other elements like that. So probably I'll be able to assemble something. So I think that's a good idea. I will uh, give it a thought a little bit and I'll check what uh, they have in the library. And as I said, I will post probably two or three different ideas uh, in the YouTube uh, community tab. And from there you can uh, just vote for uh, which one of the those ideas uh, it will be most interesting. And after that, I'll uh, make a video. And uh, again, if uh, those live streams and like uh, going behind the scenes and uh, breakdown for uh, what's happening is interesting for you, I uh, will after that do a live stream as well. And uh, you can just ask me more and more questions uh, because I think on the tutorials, I try to summarize it and make it uh, as uh, quick as possible because I know that everybody has their own uh, things to do for the day and it's uh, not everybody has like one hour to sit for a tutorial so I try to make them uh, very structured and uh, quick ones uh, and still to be able to get all the information and I kind of save more uh, the details and more the um, oh, extra information for the live streams and uh, showing you and also what's interesting for for you in terms of questions uh, in the scene so uh, let's see what else is there the basic visual script timeline for substance here over immediately many things we fix modeling texture etc color rock general grasp uh, as well as supposed to do my own personal game one day thank you for all the information and professionalism and enjoy the content okay thanks thanks a lot i uh, i wish you all the best actually with uh, developing your game it's uh, it's a very uh it's difficult and it's difficult uh, in a different way than like 10 years back because uh, when I started, uh, the difficult part for uh, making games was that 
nobody really knew like how to make games like uh, there were not a lot of tools there was at least in my country there was not a lot of uh, information online or books there it, it was just something that was just starting and like there were few uh reads like for example i had like 3ds max uh, book and some uh information you get from here and there some forum somebody found out and uh it was very hard getting uh, all this information but uh in terms of audience like the people uh that were playing the games they uh had also lower expectations from uh the end result of the game they were really interested into um uh the mechanics of the game and uh like more concentrated into other things and nowadays people are very very concentrated in uh in the quality of the game like in the art style and that everything needs to be polished everything needs to be uh working like very smooth because there are so many tools that uh, and so many tutorials and already people uh with a lot of experience using different tools and going like in different disciplines in game dev that uh they're like even people that are starting just now create uh i see some very awesome projects uh and uh yeah they're they look already very polished and this is because of the growth of the whole industry and uh, the advancement in in tools because uh what you can create now like with for example substance or uh with substance designer or like painter uh it's something that uh if if 10 years ago it existed it was uh, going to be like complete game changer for for the industry and it 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 was actually a complete game changer when uh, when it came out and i see a, a lot of studios uh, ever since like moving for example their photoshop uh, pipeline which before they were using for creating textures completely into substance and uh, photoshop is uh, even completely scratched in some studios nowadays so yeah oh yeah 3ds max book <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah book <laughs> it was uh actually in in, in russian i um, because i didn't find one in uh, in bulgarian and uh yeah the only one i i think the majority of resources for 3d uh back when uh, i was in in school uh was uh in russian i don't know why but uh yeah most of the books and information was actually coming from there so uh good that it's similar to to my language and i could uh steal a few ideas from here and there so yeah good for me Um, another idea that I actually wanted to, to ask you is, uh, I know that, uh, there's a lot of people that are either building portfolio or, uh, are building, uh, their scenes and like their first things that, uh, first steps into 3D. And one big thing that, uh, for me, uh, I think it's, it's an important, uh, when you're, uh, starting especially is, uh, getting feedback, uh, and, uh, getting feedback from everywhere it's uh it's very beneficial because uh, like from friends or from uh other people you can just get some feedback like the people that are not uh, for example 3d artists you can get some feedback uh just like some honest feedback uh, in terms of like feeling and uh, people are very good in terms of uh, light feeling of especially for characters like proportions and if they see that there is something which is eh, not really making sense uh, they will be very quick to spot it, even though they are not artists. Uh, but also it's important, uh, I think, to get some technical feedback uh, and uh, get uh, some suggestions like what uh, could be better and how it can be better. So, uh, yeah, please uh, feel free to either here or uh, on some of the videos if you are interested in me making um, a live stream for checking some portfolios i will probably make uh, a post like if you guys have interest into something like that i'll make a post uh, online and uh, like again into our community tab and uh, i will uh, maybe ask you just for uh, sending me a link to your art station or sending me a link to your portfolio and uh, we after that can do uh, some stream 
for uh, getting some feedback. Uh, I, I'm happy to review also if you have like some some small game, some small project or something like this uh, as well. I think uh, it can be interesting and, and beneficial. And after all, uh, checking this stuff, uh, it's uh, it's going to be also like uh, for you getting a little bit more uh, eyes on your uh, things and uh, getting a little bit more interest, uh, like feedback and uh, uh, information from many different people. So, uh, are there any other questions for, for today? If uh, not, I will be uh, ending anyway uh, very soon our stream. And uh, I'm uh, very grateful and uh, thankful that uh, so many people actually joined today, like uh, quite a lot of people uh, coming. And I'm uh, very happy that our community is growing little by little and there are more and more people coming and uh, commenting and giving the new ideas for, uh, for videos. And uh, uh, yeah, I definitely think that... Uh, with all the ideas and all the uh, feedback I'm as well getting from uh, all of you, uh, videos are gonna be better and also I'll be making to some uh, more needed and more wanted content for, for you and uh, that you can grow and uh, help you being artists. The hardest part for me far is being finding good information and creating a path to flow that feel the progress towards my goal. Uh, yeah, I totally understand you. I think that uh, now there is um, still um, a lot of information and this is actually why I wanted to create a channel uh, because I see a lot of uh, tutorials and a lot of videos uh, online that are coming but there many people are talking about uh, a certain feature or certain effect that you can uh, achieve, uh, but they don't talk for the whole process to get to there and also in what circumstances you can use it or uh, just to get like overall uh, understanding of uh, of the whole creation. Because uh, like it's, it's cool for me to make a tutorial, okay, let's... Uh, create uh for example a fontaine and we just build uh, the high poly for the fontaine and after that uh, make the bakings and all the things but it doesn't uh, like it gives you the information of uh, the pipeline and the like, creation of, of an asset but it gives you the creation of an asset for a very specific circumstances like i'm making an asset for showcasing and i'm making the asset to showcase it for uh, the for a youtube video so i don't really think about uh, composition, I don't really think about uh, overall building of the scene, I don't think about uh, many other things which for example if you're building a whole scene or you're creating an assets which are going to be used in a specific game for a specific platform, uh, then it's uh, something that's it, it's, it's very different. Uh, creating assets for uh, like videos, creating assets for uh, just showcasing something and creating assets that actually need to go into a fully functioning game. It's uh, it's two, three different things. That will fun. I worked as a 3D artist in AAA and I'm working in an environment. I think I'm going to... For my experience, I had plan an environment and technical part it's not that hard it's just practice and there is millions of tutorials online about how to do props yeah i think that uh there's tons of uh, i completely agree there is a lot a lot of uh, tutorials that uh, show how to make props and this is why actually on the channel i could try to to keep it uh, to a very minimum, like I do some speed modeling and uh, some stuff like that, uh, because I th I know that uh, there are some people that it's interesting for them and uh, they enjoy such type of content and uh, also for me it's kind of like a relaxing thing because uh, I can just sit sit down for the next uh, three four five hours and just sculpt something and then make the bakes and everything and. Uh, make a, uh, after that like a 10 minute video from out of it. So for me, it's also like a meditation uh, thingy that I don't need to really uh, talk that much and uh, I can just listen to some music. But uh, yeah, getting everything from uh, from beginning to, um, to the end, uh, really practice. And uh, I would say 
not only practice, but don't be afraid of uh, making mistakes because it's uh, the only way to to get it right and the only way to start building stuff which more and more people say wow this is amazing is uh, by just doing more things and iterating on them and like getting feedback and then iterating and feedback and iterating because uh, through iteration is uh, pretty much the best way and the best uh, uh, process of uh, learning and uh, improving your, your art and of course you need to be prepared for uh, some some uh, harsh comments and some not very nice feedbacks from time to time but um, it will be always like that now seen in the beginning instead of a starting with a big one Yeah, I think that uh, that's uh, also a good uh, comment for the size of the scenes uh, when you are making in the in the beginning. I see uh, this as well that uh, everybody wants to create a uh, open world like an MMO game or something like that, and uh, then you start making it. You create uh, 40, 50, even a hundred assets. And you just look at it and say, oh my god, I, this, this is like just 5% or like just 10% of uh, everything that I need to do just for this zone. And there's uh, 20 more zones. <laughs> and then <laughs> you just slowly uh, uh, yeah, never <laughs> go back to, to this uh, project. So yeah, uh, creating small scenes, finishing them and iterating on them, I think it's, uh, it's a good, uh, good thing. All right, perfect. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today. Thank you super a lot for uh, the donations that I received. Again, uh, this is D and Evgenia Savluk are the ones that uh, donated uh, in the chat today. Thank you and uh, also have a look into uh, the section that I, I mentioned for uh, becoming a member. It will greatly help me creating more content, creating more streams like this, and uh, also creating a lot more assets, brushes, uh, and materials uh, for all of you guys to download it and uh, help you with uh, with your projects. Thanks again. The stream is going to be available probably in a few hours uh, when it finishes processing uh, to watch it on YouTube. So feel free to uh, have a look at it. If you want to go back to some of the elements uh, that... Uh, I was talking about and also uh, feel free to leave comments there because uh, for me it's the same process <laughs> of iterating and learning for creating the videos only getting like more feedback and uh, more ideas from uh, from all of you and like uh, pointing out stuff that uh, I didn't do that well uh, these videos and tutorials and uh, the channel will become better and uh, more interesting so yeah thanks have a great evening and maybe for some of you it's morning so have a nice day as well and see you next time